Mayor Richards? Here. Thank you. Uh, next item, we're going to move public comment to the back of the meeting because, as Paul Harvey would say, we're going to get the other half of the story. And uh, there will be information here that people will be aware of and maybe we'll answer some of their questions. So we'll start out with new business, discussion slash direction regarding the town manager position. Uh, Ruth, I will give you a chance to comment, but Tony, you would call the meeting, you know, wanted it, so I think yes. I just speak first. Now, okay. Uh, this meeting is not all about the police chief being fired, but also about many other issues that we commissioners and the town employees have had to deal with for many years now. At the last meeting, uh, Vincent explained his frustration with having been kept in the dark on many issues by the town manager and the leaders of this board, whom have been working in lockstep with her behind the scenes. I could well have said the same thing about myself. About five years ago, our budget workshop, when the town staff recommended that we purchase a new engine for an older model truck and delay purchasing the new one for another year, it was my position that the most reasonable thing to do was purchase a new truck. The board agreed. The town manager walked out of the meeting and did not return. The finance director then finished the workshop without her. Three years ago, it was brought up to build a new building of public works. We all agreed it was needed. In further discussion, the town manager stated that we were going to wait until the library was paid for, which would be about two years, so we could be debt free. It was my suggestion that we go ahead with what we needed, take bids. If the bids were good, we could borrow the funds at 3.5% interest and get to work on it. Uh, our own town manager then stated we are going to wait until we are debt free. And her Supporters on this board nodded their head in agreement. Uh, at the time, the cost of building the building was going up by about 5% a year. Uh, we are now uh, working on building that building, and I'm sure it's going to cost a couple hundred thousand more to build it now than it would two years ago, and we've missed out on using that building for two years since. On our yearly workshop budget, for many years, this was the longest meeting of the year, going over all requests line by line and lasting a good four hours. The town staff had managed to reduce the workshop, uh, workshop to a little more than a, nothing but a reading of their proposed budget. And the last one lasted about an hour and a half when I brought up two items in, that were not in the budget. There was no real discussion on this. They just steamrolled over my opinions and treated these issues as if I were interfering with their reading of the proposed budget. I have also talked to several former town employees pertaining to former working conditions. Everything they have had to say falls in line with the others. They were well-respected former department heads, not some lying scumbag, scumbags with an axe to grind. I believe what they had to say. I've heard things such as temper tantrums, browbeating, demeaning, confrontations, and threats to fire. This is totally unacceptable with the employment of this town. Our hands are not tied. It is now up to the town to deal with the dealer. Uh, Chief McKinstry has had the finger pointed at him and being blamed for 26 officers that have left the force during his time as chief. But a third of these have retired on disability pensions. There's usually one or two a year. The state law requires that any officer that has a heart attack, stroke, or hypertension, this is to be considered a result of their service and they are then eligible for lifetime pensions. There is currently two members of the force at this time attempting to get that pension now. Plus the younger officers, they usually uh, tend to move on to more active departments. Uh, this is the nature of a small town police department, the turnovers. Then we have those retiring due to age, uh, plus, there's always a few that get into trouble. One recently got a DUI in Eustace and was fired immediately by the town manager. No one gave a thought of, of putting all, him on some kind of a program, wanting to work uh, without alcohol in his system. So, um, this is all I got to say right now. Okay. Mayor? Mayor? Uh, we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. 
I've tried to micromanage her, undermine her authority, or impede her ability to do her job, and that is to run the town, which is what she is doing. She has been a dedicated employee for 25 years, 10 years as town manager, and as far as I am concerned, she has done an excellent job. Since there was so much talk about Chris micromanaging, I felt I needed to get both sides of the story, so I talked to the department heads. I was also willing to listen to any employee who wanted to talk to me. Needless to say, I talked to many employees in the office and even got telephone calls at home from past and present employees who had high praise for her and thought she had been unfairly attacked because she was just not the kind of person that was being portrayed. Of all the employees that I talked to, not one, let me repeat, not one, They wouldn't dare. Felt that Chris micromanaged, intimidated them, or were they ever in fear of losing their job? It's the people that you work directly with who know what kind of a boss you are. And I was hearing just the reverse of what we were led to believe. The employees I talked to thought Chris was kind, helpful, thoughtful, always had their back, supportive, the morale was high, and some even went so far as to say she was the best boss he had ever worked for. She employs the highest standards for herself and expects it also from her employees. I have known Chris for 17 years, before she was town manager and before I was on the commission, and she has always been professional, respectful, and helpful to me, even though at times I'm sure that I've been a royal pain. Mm -hmm. I feel we made an excellent choice when we hired Chris Kohler and need to keep her as town manager. Thank you. Commissioner Hannon for the first time. No comment. Commissioner Benson. Well, I don't know. I told, I did want to make it. I apologized to Chris. I was out of line. I was not professional at the last meeting, and I hope to not have that happen again. Well, I tell you what, my problem with I have with Chris. Uh, yeah, I I went through the personnel files. And all the things that happen, there is nothing to back them up. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give you an instance, and it should be the, it is the chief, it doesn't really matter who, whom it is. Uh, there, you know, supposedly there was a six year thing going on between her and the chief for her statement. Uh, if there was, I feel that she, you know, there was a personality thing. She should have come to the commission, talked to the commission. There's either individually or like that. How did, why did this go on for six years for her? I don't know how long because I didn't know. I'll just, just one thing I, I noticed uh, that I keep hearing that. Uh, the chief, you know, and I don't want to get this into the chief. I gotta gotta be careful. Uh, that he hid things. How did you know that he hid things? Were you told by somebody else in the department? Uh, and then did you at that time ask that person who is called a snitch? Uh, where if you like it, lady. Uh, uh, anyway, were they brought in and you had a face-to-face -face where you brought the supposed reporter and the chief and other people to uh, uh, discuss it and find out, you know, try to get to the bottom of it. Other than just putting in here, I'll read, this is one thing here, administrative system process. Chris does a good job kindly turning in the proper paperwork in all areas except counseling forms. There is nothing I could find, or at least I was given, uh, by the uh, human resources that was in his file that documented that he did it. You know, all we're doing, we're, we're all talking about words. But I've yet to have anyone bring or ask to show me that it was documented 
It just was covered by him, when it was covered, what time, who was present, why, and should be put in his personnel file. You know, you, you, anybody can say anything, but uh, they, uh, you know, I, I guess I've said all of them. I'm going to say, I just, I'm just not pleased. I'm, I'm with, I, I agree with Commissioner Holden. I'm not pleased with uh, when we're giving out so-called uh, bonuses. Uh, I will go to Webster's Dictionary and find the de de definition of a bonus. It does not. Uh, it does not say that it's a lifetime thing. They're typically said a typical bonus is a one-year thing. And we've been, you know, I come from industry, and I've never seen where all the department heads got a, got a bonus. It usually works on what's called the bell curve. You have someone that more than more exceeds, and how do we know they exceed? There's nothing in their personnel file to tell you that they exceed. <laughs> you know, other than the a blurb on their form that says, oh, they exceed it. That's why I refused to fill out a evaluation for Chris last year, because I couldn't document she did a good job. I have no, there's absolutely nothing to get other than word of mouth. You know, I believe in if you're going to give a bonus, you have, the person has to stretch what I call, you know, I don't give bonuses for people to come to work and do, do quote, quote, a good job. And get a bonus, you have to go on and above and beyond. So, uh, that, that is a type of management that I come from. It's what I believe in. And not everybody gets a bonus. Everybody but one or two. Sir, who are you with? I'm with a watchdog blog called FiscalRangers.com. I can can he keep video taping? Yes. I do it okay. in many cities. Okay. I don't okay. <laughs> I don't like it, but that's okay. That's fine. You have your right, it's a public meeting. I'm sorry. But I find it distracting, sir. Okay. Uh, he knows who I am. Let me see where I go. You know, you have, you know, our our total employee evaluation and how we do the budget. I agree with Commissioner Holden. I'm just handed a budget, and in the budget is a department. And the department heads and everybody's salary, we just have a thing that's called salaries. There is nothing in there that tells that the department head or anyone has done anything to, but to come to work and do a good job. And that's what, that's what they're paid for right now. They're not paid a bonus to do a good job. They're paid a bonus to do above and beyond a good job. In other words, in my opinion, that the department heads ought to come to Chris and give her a list of three things that I think I that I will accomplish that is above and beyond my job, and and uh, at periodic times, Chris goes over this with them. It's not the fact that the person gets all three of them done. It's the fact that she would be able to evaluate, are they stretching? Are they, you know, are they doing something extra for the bonus? I, I can't find anything, and I'm, I'm willing to listen and see, but I've been here six years, and I've never seen anything that, uh, you know, we're, we're giving, when we say we're giving a, a, a cost of living and a bonus, we're really giving a salary increase of maybe 5% or whatever it is. And salary increases and bonuses are quite a little bit apart. I guess I've said all I'm going to do. Mr. Thank Mayor. you. All right, thank you. Mr. 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 Mayor, may I? Oh, you did for the first time, yes. Two words. Town charter. Oh, yeah. I'm for changing it. Okay. That's the real words? Words of wisdom. Yes. Did everybody get the town manager matrix that I had asked for? It shows how we rated Bill and Pack. Oh, 
six or so years on the various categories. Now you'll note there's like 10 or 12 categories, supervision, <laughs> leadership, execution of policy, community relations, administrative duties, economic development, intergovernmental regulations, town and council relations, planning, and financial management and budget. And as far as when you were talking about the comments, as far as I know, evaluations, if all they do is meet expectations, you don't need a comment for that. Only if they exceed or if they're unsatisfactory. That's the usual norm. You'd agree to that. I, I agree. So that is the time when you as a commission have an opportunity to have input, each and every area. I take full responsibility for that. Fine. And you'll notice, mine actually got lower with length because as she exceeded, I was kind of expecting it. So it was just, that's why I put meet expectations. Now to get back to what you referred as a bonus, we work hard. It's not a bonus. We have the merit system. And we have a cost of living. The cost of living, as determined on the Consumer Price Index in Atlanta, Georgia, and you know that's usually between two and three percent. So when you're looking at exceeds, you're only looking at one or two percent. That's right. And again, I agree with you. You don't expect everybody to get it, but having the second lowest tax evaluation in all of Lake County and still keeping the front doors open and keeping as debt-free as possible kind of is a good outcome. I don't know about anybody else. Well, I may not be the kindest, gentlest person, but what I'm in is that we run efficiently. Yes, we do. We run quality. How do you know that? Because of book taxes? Tell me. You know, you know, what, I is, know it because what is documented? You know, we can all talk and blah, 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 but if it's not on paper, it's okay. You know, tell, tell me, Chris kept taxes low. That's something we can see. What else did she do is document. Again, we have a roadway pavement management planning system, and anybody can go around and look at our roads, and I would guess that they meet or exceed the roads of any other community in the area. Okay. Our police force is probably close to 50% of our budget, and I'm very proud because we get police reports, and believe me, the kiddies are anxious out there and, and doing all sorts of things, and I, I thank the police for all they do, but we get reports on that, and I read them, and I know where the hot spots are, and the favorite areas and stuff like that, and that's the reason we have a drug dog and whatnot. I could go on and on. Economic development. Do you see more happening than is happening right here, right now? I was most worried when we put Chris in there. I knew she had a background in police. I knew she'd been in the planning. I knew she'd been in code enforcement, which is the lousiest job in the whole town because you can't be tough enough, you can't be easy enough. There's no winning. Somebody paints their house bright orange. They help hate you for telling them they have to change it. The people next door is, they want you to roast them in hell. So that's what I look at. And as CT knows, I know public works. And I've been pleased on the storm cleanup. I'm pleased how the landscape looks. I'm pleased that the ditches are clean. And where they do get it, I'm glad they scrape back the edges on the road where the lawn's trying to take over it. But these are the things I look at. And I, I am not the nicest guy in the world. I, I will say, if you're wondering why I put up with somebody for six years, I bet I've only fired five people in my lifetime. The rest I nagged. If they were any good at all, they went to another place that fit their, whatever their experience or, or profession was. But I always do, like when I fired the dog catcher, that somebody was going to have to do that job. Thank goodness Con Shirley stepped up and did it. I would have been chasing Rottweilers around. Uh, 
And, and maybe, maybe I take this, but you know, it's like when I drive down a road, I look left and right. I once had a union up in this town. I had four labor unions in New Hampshire. They complained I didn't stop and see them. I said, well, when I'm driving by and I'm doing a planet board meeting or something like that, I look to see if the stone's there, the pipe's there, if the people are in the ditch. I said, if everything looks all right, I've got better things to do, I keep on going. Well, then I thought about it and I thought, well, geez, they want me to stop in, so I did. They were all as nervous as cats on a hot tin roof. What do you see? What do you see? But, you know, you do what you can. Uh, Commissioner Holden. Yes, go ahead. And I probably was as guilty as most of moving that budget along, mm -hmm. but realized there's five of us here. And you're the one, when it was over with, so we got this over with in an hour and a half. Like, it's a great excitement that we didn't do our job. Like I said, I like moving. We should have went line by line like we always did. Uh, we go to each budget. And I have each commissioner have a chance for anything in a line that he doesn't like. You did right. not do that. You cut I did. it down when I brought up the facts that there was two other things that should have been in that budget. No other commissioners voted you on that, did they? Uh, none of you did. You see, you're like you're hypnotized. That has nothing to do with the manager. That has something to do with right. the them. And, and what does it have to do with the manager? What you're saying all along, any manager would have done just as good. I'm in favor of doing better. All you need is two other votes, and you can do better. Maybe we'll have them today. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe not. But the thing is, that we're going to approach this like a professional business. And anything that happens, these are right here. Every time you fill one of those out, even if it was meets expectations, in many cases you can't ask much more than that. Maybe they don't get a bonus, the uh, merit raise, but they get a cost of living, and they continue to be here and continue to make the same salary. I, I There's none know. of these that, that say unsatisfactory. None of them. Was there a line where you could put down? Yes. Or unsatisfactory. Yes. yes. There was five. Well. Uh, Thanks for reminding me. The next time I'll do that for you. And as a matter of fact, Commissioner, yep. you did on your last evaluation, you had two that you marked needs improvement. I contacted you, and if you recall, we went and met at Cottage Inn, had breakfast to discuss. Part of the problem you had was the budget. And I explained to you the charter requires that I submit a balanced budget. And it's the commission's choice whether they want to go through it line item by line item. However, I did understand where you were coming from and I have had the department heads give me a list of what they want to do this upcoming year. And that's when we were talking about having the workshop in February. That was one of the things I was going to pass out so I could get some direction because it was going to be a meeting. It would be open to the public, but it would be just the town manager and the commission, not the department heads, and to get some direction from the commission before we started the budget. If I may, while we still have the floor, for people to realize the budget's not out here, but there's like 250 line items. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but if for the past 10 years you spent so much on postage and it falls within that, I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk about things that are over and about what they used to be. When I get the monthly budget report, the accounting, I'm looking for the rate of spending for the particular month and how that compares with what money's coming in and what the budget's going to be. I know in the front line, of course, we spend up front for a lot of our insurances. So those are always heavy. But for the most part, the budget, if we're 25% through the year, you can see the budget is raised about 25% of what budgeted for the year. And uh, we can always do better. No doubt. But just going line by line, item by item, piece by piece. Four hours. May, may, may I don't I, even care if it's two hours more. May, but why do it if it's not necessary? 
I, that's your opinion, sir. Well, I'll give you another example. In this town in Massachusetts that I inherited, it wasn't even my budget. And yeah, and they were going, the alderman were going through the budget, and they had $250 for a concrete for thrust blocks on a water main, which, if you have an elbow, you're going to have a thrust block. But they hadn't spent the money, so they turned it back in, just like you see here when they don't use it. It goes back into the general fund. And they were honest. And they were talking about zero-based budgeting. And I said, I just spent $63 million of the Air Force money, and I didn't give them back one red cent. It was all committed. So if you want to go through the budget, item by item, line by line, that's not my cup of tea. I don't know about the rest of the commission. And it's not that we don't have the time. It's just not time wisely spent. Mayor, if I may. Yes. We get those budget books way in advance. Oh, yeah. And at home, I do go through line by line by line, but it's not necessary to do that at a workshop because it is a waste of time. Yeah. It's the important items that are in there are the ones that we need to discuss. Yeah. I know they were probably frustrated each time they get an air conditioner. I said, how many air conditioners do we have? You know. You, re but you refused to discuss the building of the building. We could have borrowed the money at 3.5% instead of delaying it two years so you could have bragging rights that the town was going to be debt free. That's not bragging, bragging rights. That's just pay it as you go. We could have built the building. Extending yourself. We could have built the building for several hundred thousand or less than what it's going to cost now if we would have went ahead and built it. But there was absolutely no one on this board wanted to discuss it. The total cost of the whole building is only a million, isn't it, CT? One five. So you're going to save seven hundred thousand dollars? I said several hundred thousand, not okay. half a mil. All right. And at the well, time, it was discussed at seven hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. They, I, they, we were not even invited to help plan the. Uh, but this has building. To do yes, it does. Right. It, it depends on how we're treated, how the whole board is treated, with the town manager. She did not invite us at the meeting where the building was planned, how it was going to be laid out, anything about it. She did not invite us for the bid opening. Uh, yeah. It's like, here it is, this is what we're going to do. Well, who is we? That's my question. It's you and the town manager running everything, and the rest of us, it's like, go away. <laughs> you had an opportunity to see the plans eventually, right? Eventually. Well, Commissioner Hannon, second time. What resonates in my ears for all these years is the auditor's report on our budget. Yep. And it has been excellent yes. for all the years I've been here. Even a couple of years we had some hard times. Yep. I never had an issue with the budget. Nobody's kicking up about that. I'm kicking up what I, we discussed, I, what I, we could have discussed, what we could have done. Had an issue with the budget. I yep. think. I think we're doing an excellent job. Okay. I, I'd uh, like to say one thing. One more time before I allow the town manager to respond. To okay, okay. okay. Uh, basically, I've never dealt with a budget where the department head's salary is kind of hidden among salaries. I, all I would ask, I guess, I would like to see it broken out so that I can see, you know, uh, when I see salaries, uh, I want to know exactly, you know, who's what, where, when, and when it just says, you know, CT's department, $1,200,000 salaries. That doesn't tell me, you know, I need to know the department heads. What the, I know I can go dig it out, but I shouldn't have to. The budget should, so not the general public could look at the budget and see, because that's who they're really interested in, is the department heads. I'm, I'm not saying the department heads shouldn't get anything that they do not deserve. I'm just saying for the sake of good housekeeping, I guess I call it, that that part of the budget is broken out totally so that each and every one of us have a kind of, uh, to understand it, and if there's some public here, they can understand it. Because that is 
I'm going to tell you, that is the comment I'm getting from my uh, constituents. They're, they're, they're not happy when I, I was asked by them and showed them the amount of money the department heads are going. They said, how could we know that what they were getting? Because it's all belonged to him. And that, that's, that's really, it's not fair to them who are paying, and it's not fair to everybody else. And I'm, like I say, I, I don't, it's not to be grudge, it's so that, you know, it should be public record. And the, the town manager, all of the salaries should be, uh, uh, you know, not the salaries any lower than the department head. A department head and above, including my, ourselves or myself, should be very public information. And ours is not. Ours is not, really. It just says, chunk of money, commissioners. And, it, you know, uh, these people are not auditors. They don't, a lot of people don't look at budgets. And I just think that our budget is a little too compacted. It needs to be broke out a little more, especially in the wage situation. Has anybody ever asked to look at your budget book, which we all have a copy of, even though it doesn't oh, have yes, individual yes, salaries? Yes, that, that, that's exactly where these people come, and they look at the budget book, and it says, where, you know, I'm, I, well, Sir Forum says, I'm a, I'm a CPA auditor. I've never seen anything. You know, they said, it's not, a, it's not an in it's not a, not a non-standard practice. But they said themselves, they never seen that when the heads of the companies never broke out, you know, look what, you know, maybe, maybe I'm clear off track. But I, I, I don't I, totally I, understand it, hooking it up with a person, but there's only like 103 employees, so it wouldn't mm -hmm. burn the forest to, no, no, I to don't add want, it. But, I, uh, I, I don't want the 103, it's not the 103 people. The, your constituents are not interested in them. They're interested in the town manager and in the department heads. So that's who they've asked. They, I give them that book, and they, they've looked at it. I, I've got a couple of people in my constituency that are auditors or like that, and they they didn't. Did you come down and show get the pay plan to show what people are in here? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. It's all public record. So. It's public record. Yeah. Nobody's ever asked me, and that's why I asked. Well, so, yeah, they, so, I've, been, you know, I've been asked that. Yeah. They said, you know, how much of this bundle of money, you know, is it all going to the department heads? And what per, they're, they're concerned about the percentage, it, you know. Uh, I don't know, don't ask me why or how, but I, I live around some people that are that are auditors and like that, and just, they, they want to know. And unfortunately, our budget doesn't come. Were you able to tell them that on, when we did the wage studies and we did all of the plans, no, I didn't we looked at that I, and we I, saw what the average was for the area, and that's no, how they came no, about that, it? That, that doesn't, to them, that doesn't have a thing, doesn't hold water to <coughs> them. It, it's, they just don't think that the bundle of money it gives you a chance, they think, to hide stuff. You know, other I know that they can come down, I explained to them, I went in great detail, but they think that in a budget that it should be, they said, show me a corporation that the budget's out, that the chief exec, the, the financial officer, all the chief officers' salaries are not simple <coughs> in the budget. They, they pulled them out and showed them to them. Show me different corporations. Yeah. Okay. So, you know. Mr. Mayor, could we uh, get away from the budget and get back to why we're here? Well, actually, the next thing I was going to do is go to the town manager because she's been sitting over there and listening to all of this uh -huh. so that she could uh, relate to it. Thank Ms. you. And Where's Thank you, Mayor. First thing I do want to um, bring up Commissioner Holden, you stated that I walked out of a workshop. Yes, you did. You mentioned you had to get something from your office, and you left and never came back. That was when we discussed putting the engine in the old truck five years ago, I think. 
I have never walked out of a meeting and not I come back. I saw with my own eyes. My eyes don't lie. I'm sorry. I, I have not be followed. Hmm? I can't be followed. I can't be followed. No. no. So, that one bothers me. Okay. As far as I understand, there are some difficulties, but part of this is between with the commission. And I know they get frustrated, okay. and they get frustrated with me, but you have to keep in mind, I can't do anything unless I have three commissioners that give the approval. Okay? I mean, that's how it works. And I, I sense some frustration, especially from Commissioner Polden, but on that loan and, you know, those plans were brought to the commission. As far as bid openings, those are open to the public. You know, we do have to be careful if we have more than one commissioner attend, we do have to post it. But you are more than welcome to come to those. All the plans come to the commission. The commission has the final say on it. So as far as bonuses, we don't do bonuses. We did the 2.5% cost of living and up to a 2.5% merit. That's what they were given. Most of my department heads do exceed. That's why they're department heads. We do have a high expectation. I do get from them every year what they plan on doing this year. Um, you know, if you have concerns, then if you come to me, we can talk about it. Commissioner Holden stated that he felt that I let the developers get away with everything. Well, we don't. Our staff, that we make sure that they follow the LDRs, which is what the commission sets. You guys are the ones that approve it. Anything that comes through, any waivers, anything like that, has to be through the commission. Um, I felt that I have done a good job. If you have problems with me, you know my door is always open. To me, you can tell the job I've done just by how well the town's done with the employees. I mean, we have a very good work environment. We don't have a large turnover. And yeah, you're going to get some in the police department because part of that is right. Some of the people that come in, they're just getting out of the academy. They want to come in, and then they're here for a while, then they want to go to a bigger city. I understand that. But as the town manager, it is important for my department heads, for me to have trust that they're following my direction. Because just like I'm responsible to you and answerable to you and to the residents, the department heads are answerable to me. So I have to have that trust in it. So... Do you have any questions? Um, now we've got this down discussion direction regarding town manager and then discussion direction on the police chief. But one of the items, it seemed apparent to me, since all of these are excellent value, you know, high rating, that this has kind of festered this up or, or created this. So do you want to? have the manager explain to you what her problems with the chief were that resulted in that because she's got his evaluations. May I? Yes. There's an answer to just about every question that I've heard here today and it's the town charter. Mm -hmm. The charter states that the town manager has the right to hire and fire and does not have to come to the commission. Until we change the town charter, a lot of these issues that came up today could remain. Go ahead. I agree with you, uh, Commissioner Cannon. You brought it up at the last meeting. I was one of the uh, ones that disagreed with you on it, but now I am in agreement. Thank you. Bring it back up again at tonight's meeting, and we will take another vote. Mary, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Sack. I did check with some of the surrounding communities, and all of them, with the exception of Wildwood, said that it was their city manager, city administrator, who had the authority over personnel managers, 
personnel matters regarding the police chief. So we are not the only ones that have in our charter that our town manager does the hiring and firing. And if I may, for those that don't understand the reason for the way the charter is written that way, it was to isolate, with the exception of the town manager and, and town attorney, all of the employees from the politics of day to day. And as I've stated before, no individual commissioner can direct any town employee to do anything. That's why it's written that way. And even the, when it comes to the manager and the town attorney, only by a majority vote can they be removed. Now, by a majority vote, you can direct the manager to do something. And they can, as if I have done so in the past, tell you no. And then you have to choose whether you want to live with it or not. But I uh, was pretty particular about how I did my job and if I was going to go through all that grief, it had to be something I could support. So there were times, I was going to say, the only time you get a chance to pick your boss, you know when that is? When you interview them. Because there's a few jobs I turned down that they offered to me after I realized financially and the, what their chain of command was and whatnot, I wasn't interested. So. Did you want anything more on the police chief, or do we want to, we can allow some, any comment from the public at this particular time before we close this matter and vote on it? Ken, if we have two separate issues here, let's handle them individually, in okay. my opinion. I don't know if the other commissioners feel the same way. Is that the pleasure of the commissioner? Show of hands? Two. So where are we Two separate. We're going to, we'll allow public comment and then we'll have a vote on uh, Kristen's position. Does that sound reasonable? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. Commissioner yes. Vincent? Okay. Now anybody from the public can come forward, state your name and address for the record, and you can make any comments uh, to help us in our deliberations and our vote. Is there anybody? I guess I'll be the first one. Be civil. I am going to try my best, Mayor. Three minutes. You will. I only got two minutes. Uh, Bring good afternoon, here. ladies and gentlemen, and Ms. Colgard for having this meeting here for us. Um, I guess one thing that really gets to me is our budget. And I know, Rich, or Jim, you don't understand where I'm, maybe where I'm coming from, but even with our predecessor as town manager, the public was invited to this. We all met up at CT's building up there, and we listened to everybody go over it. And if a resident had something to say about a particular item, we had the choice to do it. That no. wasn't the budget. That was a retreat that they did. No, ma'am. It was the budget. It was the budget. Oh, the budget. That's advertised. Oh, yeah, that's, that's advertised. It's meeting, only meeting. And the public's invited. Mm -hmm. Even though they, they, they weren't yeah. here, they were all invited. When we went down... I read that column every day in the Daily Commission. What do you, what do you put it in? The uh, Orlando Sentinel or something? No, I mean, because I have never seen it in, in, in oh, here. Yeah. And I read it all the time. It posted there, but I think it's also in... It's on the website. It's in the paper. Daily Sun has it. Um, the Daily Sun, I read the Daily Sun all the time. And unless it's a real small, tiny little article, I mean, I've missed it then. But I'm sorry if I did, because I would love to be at these meetings. Well, I know the town... Because there are times... Yeah, I know, small town. Yeah, making a lot of money. Give me a break. Um, there are things that I would have brought up. And I think the one thing is about this building up, up on the hill. It's, you and I have talked about it several times. Somebody's got to prove to me that we actually need that. That thing has been sufficient to us for years. Why can't it be sufficient more? Unless you're all planning on this town, you know, game busters and going booming. And if, if it's going game busters and booming, 
It's not from our committees here. It's thank you, Mr. Morris. The villages brings in everything that comes to the town of Lady Lake. It's not the town of Lady Lake bringing it here. If you all think that, y'all living in a damn dream world someplace. And you got to come back down to reality. I mean, because that's it. Um, I don't like the idea of, you know, the salaries and stuff being clumped together. I don't like that idea. Because that implies you're trying to hide something from me. And, and Jim, you were in business like I was. We couldn't hide nothing from the general public. There was nothing. You're going to be open. We seem to operate under the old scale where we just keep it here and we'll tell them if they really push us. Well, I'm sorry. I want to know what my tax dollar is going to in this town. I mean, if it comes down where I'm paying Miss, Miss Ruth too much money, I want to be able to tell her, Ruth, you're making too much money. Sometimes I think she's making too much. Sometimes I think she's not making enough. But, you know, I'm sorry about that. But I don't agree with this. I'm looking back at this town, and what am I looking at? But I'm looking at Bill Vance running this town again. And we got rid of Bill Vance for some of the crap that's going on in this town. We got rid of him. If you all remember what went through to get rid of him, we did. And the other thing, too, is I am sorry that I didn't listen to Paul Hannon years ago, but we need this charter. We need a charter. When is this charter developed? When was it built? 40 years. Last time it was looked at was 87, wasn't it? Yeah, 40 years ago. Yeah. 40 years ago. Where the hell were you 40 years ago, Jim? I hate to admit it, but uh, on the Air Force Base in Bangor. Okay. Now we can go right on down the line. I was an agent. Ruth was way too young and she married Kenny. So, you know, we go back that far, okay? It needs to be done on a periodic schedule. you got to update this. We cannot leave this much power in one individual's hand. Can't do that. You can't do that in the federal government anymore. You can't do it in the state government. It's not in that individual's hand because what? it's still answerable less, which is why we're having what? this meeting. Excuse me? Can, what just happened to our police chief? So, I mean, there's I have talked. There's going to be more to that story. I, hey, well, there could be a lot more. There better be something justifiable. Yeah. I've talked to people in here yeah. that will talk to you. You see them on the street. And I mean, they sit there and say the same thing. We're afraid to say anything at all because she'll kill us. Oh, for goodness sake. She'll can us. She'll fire us. And I mean, I don't want that much power in one individual. It's, it's not you don't even have that. It's not that uncommon. I don't want it in our town. Okay. If Donald Trump can't do it, by God, neither can you. Oh, wow. Okay? You're done. <laughs> yeah, it's that easy. I'm done. But I'm just saying, that's... Well, you know, your name to the record and address. Do you need my name? No, I already gave it to you. Go with five. Yes. Betty Salas, Lady Lake. The only thing I wanted to share is when I did, um, after the last meeting, it just you know perked some uh, curiosity. When I spoke to uh, Bellevue, their police chief only answers to the mayor. Um, their chief does not answer to the town manager. So that was one that they decided to do things differently. But the thing that interested me the most is the charter, because when Commissioner Hannon brought up the charter, I, I had to admit I'd never read the charter, so I sat down and read the charter. Um, but every jurisdiction that I spoke to, which was more than a dozen, they have charter review committees, which they told me consist of like seven to a dozen people. And then those people are responsible ever so many years that they decided, like the one told me that the, length, that the longest length of time that they can go without a charter review is 10 years. Everybody else, every five to seven years, they sit down. They make sure that the charter is still pertinent to the size of their communities, to what's going on in the community, to just a change of life, you know, because we evolve all the time. But they do review it to make sure that it is pertinent. But it's not so much the commissioners, the review committee 
reads it, makes sure it's good, and then they bring proposed changes to the commissioner. So it wouldn't take away your time. You wouldn't have to scrutinize it all the time, but you have a review committee to do it for you. Anybody else wishing to comment? You'll be next. <clears throat> well, I could be taking you first. Oh, you were closest, so I figured just to move it along. How are you going next, sir? Okay, I'm probably over, too. <laughs> okay. Um, in deference to what Phil said, the villages didn't bring me in. Oh. I was here before the villages, <laughs> so they don't bring everybody in. Oh, okay. But the first developer was a good friend of mine. Uh, I dated his daughters. <laughs> um, I have been in administration, uh, either in church or in industry, for over 40 years. And I was brought up in a family, a uh, small business family, uh, where my dad started a business and became a multi-million dollar business in the 60s and 70s. Uh, whether it be formal training, uh, which I had many administrative classes in my doctorate, or the um, uh, practical application of that in the world, I think I've had some experience in both administration and observing good administration as well as bad. Um, in this situation, frankly, I, the, you can talk about a lot of budget stuff, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But the catalyst that brought this up was uh, Chris McKinstry and uh, uh, Chris Colgard. I like both of them. I mean, problem with either one of them. Uh, for some reason, uh, Chris McKinstry uh, came to me a few weeks ago to talk about it. Uh, he had nothing but praise to say about Chris Colgard except for one area, and that boiled down uh, to a difference in management style. I'm not sure was a bad person, a bad boss, just a difference in management style. Uh, he called it micromanaging. Uh, that's an opinion. I hope you understand that. Uh, frankly, what I've heard in the last hour has been the board micromanaging her. Um, you're going beyond the charter, beyond what is really your prerogative. It's authority delegated to her, and now you're saying, well, we want you to do it differently. You can't do that. Um, if you micromanage a town manager, you're going to lose the good ones. And the ones you get are going to retire. Aren't going to be retiring. Uh, I've been here for 30 years in Lady Lake. Uh, when I came in, John Lynch was a town manager. Frank, I think we're a good one. Uh, I've been here through the good ones and the bad ones. Uh, Bob McKee was a great town manager. And in my personal experience, as I have observed the workings of this town, I would put Chris in that group of those two. Could you do better? Probably. Could you do worse? You better believe you could do worse. Uh, I think you've got a great town manager. Is she perfect? If you apply that standard to her, be very careful. Uh, she's good. She's honest. She has integrity. She works hard. Do you agree with everything she does? That never happened. And you pull that to the requirement for keeping your job. Again, be very careful what you're going to get. I would not take it. Not on a heartbeat. Um, and the town council, I want you to know something. I and our church pray for you. I support you. I encourage you. Behind your backs, I talk good about you. <laughs> I do that. But I also want you to know that you represent me. And what you're doing is going to hurt my town. Excuse me, what you propose will hurt my town. As I've listened again the last hour or so, I, I think in my observation, I, I have come to a conclusion. The issue is not so much with Chris as it is with y'all. I'm hearing stuff, you're arguing against you, and by the way, arguing is so, it, it should embarrass you. You guys are better than that. I know you are, because I know you. What I've seen today, guys, no. And I'm not rebuking, I'm just saying, guys, when our town council violates the code of conduct we require of those who come here, there's something wrong. That should never happen. Um, if you dismiss our town manager because of the situation, and it, like it or not, it's going to be an issue between her and Chris. At this point, it doesn't matter really. I appreciate what you said, but it does, it, that's irrelevant because it's come down to this. We know that. That means that if you release her, you did it because of a difference of opinion between her and her subordinate. Now, what manager or what position of management in your town are you going to get 
when they realize their job depends on keeping their subordinates happy. Guys, you can't do that. Uh, I, I have had staffs of dozens and dozens personally. My wife manages a staff of over 130. On any one day, there are people that would hang either one of us. And if you made keeping our job, depending on that, we would never keep our job. And you cannot do it. The morale. I, too, have, have uh, surveyed a number of the department heads. And, and I'm kind of wondering, I, I left the last meeting wondering how many of y'all had interviewed other department heads. And not, amen, and not just those who have quit. Guys, if somebody quits, do you think maybe they've got a grudge? Okay. Interview the ones who are still here. I did. And guess what? You know how much political clout I've got? And I want to keep it that way. I don't want, don't want your job. They can talk to me. Doesn't matter. I got comments like, the best boss I ever had. Period. I had one that blew me away. I want to do well and do good because I don't want to disappoint her. Nobody's ever said that to me. Guys, I look around with the police department, parks and rec, um, um, the utility thing. All I see is good, uh, good morale. I see a city that works, and uh, you can micromanage that out, and you can say, well, we want perfection, and end up with nothing. Um, the morale is incredible around here, and I think that's a great, great indicator. Um, Commissioner Benson, I, I would like to thank you, because your apology earlier lifted you way up in my, for what it's worth. I appreciate that. That's a man. Uh, that's someone with the courage and integrity to say, you know what? It's kind of like my emotions get away from me. That's what we've all done it. Not many of us have the, the strength to stand in public and say, guys, you know, I did. I, I apologize. Appreciate that. This town must never be run on emotions. It must never be operated based on not getting along with each other. This town's more important than that. These people are more, I'm more important than that. <clears throat> well, that's what I want to say, but I probably want to walk him already. I will say this. Uh, in everything I have seen, I will support Chris Colgard, our town manager. Uh, I've heard nothing to zero today that would dissuade me from that position. Um, and I have seen her operate with, like I said, integrity, with honesty. The environment she is producing among those employees are here who are working for the town today is incredible. And don't ever forget how valuable that is. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Please state your name and address the record. Yeah. My name is Richard Johnson. Wow, this man just, everything I wanted to say, he said better. I don't know why I'm up here now. <laughs> Uh, I was the record supervisor for Lady Lake Police for 14 years, <clears throat> and I've known Chris many more years than that. And as far as micromanaging, I ran my department. Never once did Chris Colgar, town manager, ever speak to me about that department or how it was run. And I never heard an employee ever say that she interfered, ever. I've never heard a bad word against Chris Colgard all the 14 years that I've worked here. She has dedicated her time, practically her life, to this town and to the public. And I know that as a fact. I know the person she is. She's professional. She is a lady. And she's a good person. And like I said, he took my thunder. He said it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nora Choquette, 212 East McClinton Street. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity this afternoon. Balance of power is a primary focus among our government and citizens today. Too much power in the hands of many, lead, too much power in the hands of few leads to the disappointment of many, and too much power in the hands of many leads to little being accomplished. 
How do you determine and enforce a balance of power that results in the benefit of all? Regardless of whether or not we agree or disagree with the outcome of the Chief's resignation, the Commission seemed to recognize at the last meeting that protocol was followed. That being said, the decision resulted in dissension between the Town Manager and the Commission and created confusion and despondence for the citizens of our Town. On all accounts, I have heard nothing but good things about the Chief. Many people are concerned about his resignation and feel that the police, was, that the police force was carefully guided by the Chief. On the same note, I have also heard nothing but good things about the town manager and must recognize the fact that she was acting within her duties and boundaries regarding the chief and his position. If the commission is unhappy with the result, they, could, they should consider looking beyond this one situation and consider how to prevent scenarios that cause such passionate responses from occurring in the future. It seems to me that it is difficult to place blame solely on the town manager if the Commission is unwilling to take measures to change the avenue of decision-making for future decisions. As a citizen of this town, it is my hope that the Commission will carefully consider what is best for the town by putting aside personal differences and preferences and truly base all decisions made today on what will positively impact our town and its citizens when situations such as this arise in the future. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to express my opinion. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Is there any further discussion by the commissioners? Is anybody wanting to make a motion? Or? I, I will make a motion that we retain Chris Hogarth as our town manager. Is there a second? I second the motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Nay. So it passes 3-2. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now you have in front of you a uh, discussion <laughs> direction regarding the police chief position. It, it may be moved at this point mm -hmm. if we're going to follow that. I was trying to include that in the other part, but uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vincent, you were the most vocal. Did you want to say something before we go? You want to see any backup? Sure. Sure. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Hannon. You know, we all know now that it was a difference in management style between our former chief and Chris, and that happens, okay. Um, and, you know, they're both good people, okay, they both individually do their jobs very well. Um, I don't have a bad thing to say about either. Sorry this all happened, but um, I, I wish um, our former chief Godspeed and a, and a next good job. I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Hannon. For myself, I got another phone call uh, right before this meeting. Another former department head uh, expressed her thoughts, and she's no longer could gain or lose from her opinions, and her opinions were in stark contrast to what I've heard here today. I've had some phone calls, and uh, as Ms. Gassad said, I didn't have any of them negative. And I did interview department heads quietly, and I was more or less checking to see how the people were doing. And I realized that this causes you some turmoil, but the thing is that when something's bought up, we cannot ignore it. You know, if Kinstry wanted to talk to me, I made my helps available to him. I did too. But I do know things happened. It wasn't just management style. It had to do with documentation and proof. Mm -hmm. And having said that, when he discussed with me, he gave the same story as our town manager did. Almost verbatim. But in that, there was no violation of policy and procedures, which we fought hard so that our police department is accredited. There was no violation of charter, 
There was no violation of state statute. So guess what? If it comes down to a personality contest, our charter tells us what we have to do. And that's why, in those of you that had contacted me, I told you exactly that I looked into it, and the why and the wherefore. So, <clears throat> I don't think we need to discuss the chief position anymore. Is there anybody who wants to do anything? <clears throat> Want to hear from the public? Sure. Does anybody in the public wish to come forward, say anything for the record? Will we talk? Please state your name and address for the record. Yelanda Buchanan, the lakes of Lady Lake. Um, Chris gave us evaluation papers for herself. Is it a uh, public evaluation for the chief? Oh, yeah. We do have copies? Yes. Yeah. I would like to have a copies of that. Okay. That's what I have. To say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else? I want to talk about, please, Chief, the, uh, the present, the past. Not the past one? No. Oh, okay. I want to make a motion on the present. No. I can't. I want to make a motion that we hire, put out a feeler to hire a new police chief. Oh, you're talking about an advertisement. I thought you were and making I, a motion to no, hire somebody. No, I'm making a motion that we put it out for advertisement. I, I don't even the, uh, need a motion on that. It's yeah, purely in the recommendation. When it goes to fill the positions, unless you do away the position, manager's going to fill it anyway. Yeah. Right. I'm, I, I'm asking yeah. it to yep. be from an outside source. Well, what we normally do, um, we advertise in house. And we'll advertise out okay. also. Okay, I'll that. Yeah. And then we go through and do the interview. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Ham. But oh, isn't the way you do it is, is once he retired, you put a job opening out there? Is it, well, I, I was not signed. I, I, I don't even know that it might already be out there. I, I thought it was. No, we don't because with all this situation, so we haven't advertised it yet, oh, and we haven't posted it. No, no See, I put... Because it was before Christmas. Okay, yeah. okay. I, what I was basing on is what I was told. We're going to try out a new chief. Well, we don't try out... I want a chief that's been a chief, knows about a chief, and is a chief. And we're not well, trying out a chief, but, but I have to put in in order to There's no disrespect intended here, no. but the hiring is entirely the manager's position. Okay. You do the charm you, fast. I think you've made yourself clear that you'd like to see an outside professional. Yeah. Yeah. Right. At the same time, all my life I've tried to promote within if they were available. And they, they had the qualifications. Yeah. But right. at the same time, you know, that, that, that would be a, a I, bad precedent. Oh, I, I understand. I yeah. think that we should <coughs> narrow our choices down. I think we should be asking to yeah. advertise it out. Yeah. That's what I'm as, asking. Well, yeah, I think everybody's in favor of that advertising. Let's get going. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now, on this, is there anybody that wants to make a, a motion that we do nothing, or you want to discuss the position any further? The previous. I'll make a motion that they actually accept the decision that Chris made. Is there a second to that? I, I didn't hear the motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the decision that Chris Colgard made regarding the resignation. Accepting his resignation. Second. Bed motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Did you vote either way? I'm not voting. I'm not hearing any votes. There votes. wasn't really a motion. There should not have been a motion before <coughs> that. You're on the wrong subject right there. Are you not? We're talking about the resignation. You got the item here. Well, it, it's a moot point once the first one was clarified. Oh. Okay. Well, then 
you're abstaining. Are you close to abstaining? So it's three, four, two abstain. So. Now, if anybody in the public wishes to speak at this time, anybody has any concerns about how we're going to go forward from this, please come forward and say so. Can we make a comment for two, three minutes? Yeah, we can give you three minutes. Lakes is still kind of lake, right? I hope so. You're a taxpayer too, aren't you? I hope so. Oh, wait a minute. I hope so. <laughs> I want to say this is an atrocity, because I think Chief was probably the best one we ever had here. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Okay. Nobody has wanted to hear the other part of the story. But... Other part of the story. There's always another part of the story. Well, the other part of the story was what happened in the previous meeting. I mean, I think more of it should have been brought out, but that's the other part of the story. I think it's an atrocity what we're doing to Chris. He was very good here. He was well liked here by our, you know, the, you know, the people who are paying your salaries, and you know, about the people who work for him. I don't think it was right. No matter what comes out and spun up and stuff like that. I don't think it was right. Remember, we went through all of this because of what was originally instituted. So, if nothing else, we gave it credence. We heard it. We deliberated over it. I don't think it, I can't think of anything else you'd want from this body. How long did you go up and put up with the stuff at Nathanson? Say that again. How long did you all that were on this board put up with the stuff from Nathanson? Mayor, Do I don't think that this is something we don't have to put hey, up hey, past. Wait a minute, I got the floor, man. I uh, have the floor. You've gone beyond. No, I don't. I'm just asking. You're saying that you're going on this with, with Chief, but what about the stuff that happened with his predecessor and it just looked the other way? And it went that way until such a time as the manager that we did have cured it, not you. Yeah. I. And gave him the time to retire. Times that you came to me, that he was whining, and I gave you facts. And I told you the other facts. Yes. But I was the one. You know, somehow we got involved in this thing, and I didn't like it. That's why I got you involved with it. I think that when we but, made it public, we did as much anguish as we caused the staff and everybody else. We have done all that we could. And I think we should move on from this point. We should improve. Well, we can move on. <clears throat> I just think it's an injustice letting them go. That's my opinion. Okay. Do you want me to get 1,400 residents to say that too? Would that help? I got 2,500 in my area. Well, so. Okay. If there's nobody else, I'll be, we'll be adjourned. Stand for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by retired Navy Captain Lowell Barker. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hannon? Here. Commissioner Cusser? Here. Commissioner Holden? Here. Commissioner Vincent? Here. Commissioner Richard? Any interest? Here we seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. We have items F123, 4, 5, 6 in front of you. Uh, does any commissioner have any changes to the minutes or want any item removed? I don't. No, I do. Uh, commissioner Vincent? Well, I, I don't. Hey, never mind. Let it go. <laughs> uh, there was a thing in there where it alluded in the minutes. It said uh, 27 officers were gone, were, were uh, let go during the chief. And if I got the, I had the statement, but I left it in the car. Uh, actually, it should have had a parenthesis, 15 due to this, 7 due to that, and like that was left off of that. Would it be the pleasure of the commission to offer the minutes to recap that? It's not a big deal. Mayor? Yes. Commissioner, 
Um, what we can do is go back and have the clerk listen to it and then see, because if it wasn't stated in there, then we can't put it in there. Even if it wasn't my notes, if it wasn't said. Well, did you, you read it, so I assume it was stated. I thought it was said too, but we do need to verify it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, looking for a motion on the consent calendar. Excuse me, Mayor. Yes. I may. Um, I apologize. We uh, produced this consent calendar just before the meeting. Um, one of the applicants uh, regarding the stipulation agreement uh, did show up and requested um, an amendment to that. Is that something that can be done at this time, at the request of the applicant? That's how substantial it is. What's the proposed amendment? The proposed amendment is prepared in the amount of $2,139, which is 25% of the value of the property. Um, the hard cost that the town has in this with the administrative fees is $2,132, which uh, if we recoup 25% of that uh, as prepared in this agenda, um, we will be covering the hard cost and the administrative cost. The hard cost without the administrative fees, uh, that, would just cost, that would just cover the, the mowing that we've done, is $1,175. Um, the applicant came to me before the meeting and said, is there any opportunity that I can reduce that further than what's been prepared in the agreement? And I'm not sure that that was up for debate. As I recall, that stipulation was what the commission all voted on, that it would be no more than 25% of the debt. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. He just requested. Hold on, so. better than 424000 Agreed. Agreed. He just wanted me to ask. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you have the consent calendar before you. Looking for motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the consent calendar. Second. And motion seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Oh, we read no old business, no new business. Read right into the town attorney's report. Carries. Yes, Mayor, this is the second reading of Ordinance 2018-49, an ordinance of the Town Commission of the Town of Lady Lake, Florida, voluntarily annexing property being approximately 8.94 acres of land owned by the First Baptist Church of Lady Lake, Inc., addressed as 1241 West Lakeview Street, lots 13 and 14 of the Lee and Stevens Ad subdivision within Lake County, Florida, for finding for redefinition of land boundaries of the town, filing this ordinance, repealing conflicting ordinances, severability and effective date, and publication in accordance with law. Mr. Carroll. Ordinance 2018-49, and this is the second final reading. This is for the First Baptist Church for property uh, being 8.94 acres of land. Staff's recommend recommendation is for the approval of 2018-49. Uh, uh, this is the subject property in black on the map before you. As you see, it's between Lake Lake Boulevard and Lakeview Street. And the same property highlighted in yellow before you. And again, we're um, referencing the lower piece of the, the uh, properties in your image here. Um, where the single family residence is uh, below Lakeview Street. And you saw these pictures during the uh, first hearing, so I won't go back through those. This is essentially the uh, same presentation. Um, this application was received on November 20th. We did notify nine property owners within 150 feet. Uh, we also um, posted the property on November 27th. And uh, we haven't had any um, inquiries other than one phone inquiry. Um, and there was an opinion of supporter. Um, or denied on that. Past actions, Technical Review Committee individually reviewed the application for this ordinance and terminated it uh, ready for transmittal to Planning and Zoning Board. And at the December 10th meeting, the Planning and Zoning Board did vote 304 the ordinance to the Town Commission with a recommendation of approval. And at the 23rd, uh, on the 23rd of January, this Town Commission did vote 50 for approval of Ordinance 2018-49 upon first reading. This ordinance comes before you again with no changes since the time of the first reading. Are there any questions of that or the applicant on this, the second reading? I have none. No. No. Is there anybody from the public wishing to comment on ordinance 2018-49? That's in the back of the Baptist Church on 466. Hearing and seeing none, we're for motion. A motion to approve ordinance number 2018-49. Second. That motion is second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hannon? Yes. Commissioner Cusser? Yes. Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Mayor Richards? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2018-50, this is the second reading. <clears throat> An ordinance pertaining to the Conference of Planning in the Town of Lady Lake, Florida, which amends the Town of Lady Lake Ordinance 81-183, established by the Town of Lady Lake Comprehensive Plan, providing for a small-scale future land use map amendment, severability, and an effective date. Mr. Ordinance 
2018-50. This is the second of the series of three applications, and this is for the uh, future land use amendment. Um, present future land use is the Lake County urban low density, and the requested change is to Lady Lake religious facilities, which is uh, in compliance with other land development rate regulations and the proper zoning designation for the property. Staff's recommendation is for approval. Again, the map uh, depicts the property in black before you, and the same property is depicted in yellow on the uh, image on the left there. And the adjacent future land use designations have been provided to you in your packet. Again, the existing future land use is the Lake County Low Urban, urban Low Density, excuse me, and this will amend it to the religious facilities under our land development regulations. There are a couple structures on the property. We have an open air pavilion, um, we have a single family residence, and there are uh, future plans to develop the property, but nothing uh, within our department at the time. They provided a statement of purpose, which was included in your packet. And um, they, did, they also provided the short-term and the long-term uh, forecast. Again, uh, no improvements are in the queue within our department at this time. Impact on town services, um, potable water and sewer, we do not uh, service the property. However, uh, future improvements would be subject to um, connections should they uh, meet the uh, distance requirements within our matrix. We also posted this amendment on the property. These are just a couple of images that you also saw at the first reading. We also received this application on November 20th of 2018. Again, we did notify nine property owners and posted the property on November 27th. The Tech Review Committee uh, found the application ready to transmit to the Planning and Zoning Board. And at the December 10th meeting, Planning and Zoning Board did vote 3 0 to forward this to the Town Commission for the recommendation of approval. And at the January 23rd meeting of the local planning agency, the agency did vote 4 0 for approval of Ordinance 2018 50. And also on the 23rd of January, the Town Commission voted 5 0 for approval of the Ordinance um, 2018 50 upon first reading. Again, this comes before you in the same form that it was uh, brought to you at the first meeting, so no changes have occurred since the last reading. Are there any questions of that of the applicant? I have none. None. No. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to comment on this Ordinance 2018 50? This is the same property. Hearing and seeing none, I'm for motion. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 2018-50. I'll second it. The motion is second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hannon? Yes. Commissioner Custer? Yes. Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Mayor Richards? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2018-51, this is the second and final reading. An ordinance redesignating zoning classification for certain property being approximately 8.94 acres of land. Owned by the First Baptist Church of Lady Lake, Inc addressed as 1241 West Lakeview Street, lots 13 and 14 of the Lee and Stevens had subdivision within Lake County, Florida. Rezoning subject property from Lake County Agricultural A to Lady Lake Public Facilities District PFD, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Carroll. Orders 2018-51, this is the last of three applications and this is for the rezoning of the property. Presently it is Lake County Agriculture and this amendment would uh, change it to the Lady Lake Public Facilities District staff's uh, recommendation is for approval of the ordinance. Again, the same property in black on the map before you. And this is the zoning map. As you see to the north, we have the PFD designation on the existing um, church facilities, and they're seeking the same designation of the public facility district. Again, the statement of purpose was included within your packet as provided by the First Baptist Church of Lady Lake. Just a continuation of that statement of purpose. Again, this is for the 8.94 acres. Um, the permitted uses are contained within the MOA. Um, this is the bubble map that was also provided within the memorandum agreement, showing the existing as well as some of the proposed uh, future buildings. Again, nothing is um, in our department at this time, and there is a five and a ten year uh, horizon to which they've um, submitted um, potential improvements. We also posted this property for the rezoning. You see the petition number of ordinance 2018-51. And Lakeview is an unimproved road at this time. This application was received on November 20th as well. We did notify the nine property owners within 150 feet of this application. And we have not had any uh, further inquiries other than the one phone inquiry uh, regarding this application. And the Tech Review Committee found this uh, sufficient and complete to um, forward to the Planning and Zoning Board. At the December 10th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board, that board did vote 3 0 to forward the ordinance to the Town Commission with a recommendation of approval. And at the January 23rd meeting, the Commission did vote 5 0 for approval of Ordinance 2018 51 upon first reading. No changes have taken place since the time of the first reading, so this is being presented to you as well as at the first Commission meeting. And Reverend Harsh is present if you have any further questions. 
Are there any questions of that of the applicant? No. I have none. No. No. Anybody in the audience with a question on 2018 51? Hearing seeing none, looking for motion. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 2018 51. Second. And motion and second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Gannon? Yes. Commissioner Fesser? Yes. Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Mayor Richards? Yes. Thank you. Next, we have the town manager's report. Chris. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. I just have one item I want to pass out. This is actually a bill that was proposed by Senator Rader, and Derek sent it to me. If you guys go ahead and take a look at it. Um, it hasn't passed yet, but it does affect the public meeting, so we will keep an eye on the bill and keep you updated on it. And that was all I have. Well, we're right on the mayor and commissioner's report. Commissioner Hannon? Nothing. I have nothing. 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 Well, I was just going to mention I had uh, called the town manager because one of, well, twice people have approached me and they said that the villages weren't going to build any more houses on the, the lot, you know, pull the trailer out and build the house because there was totally some sixteen or seventeen thousand dollar charge and I said, Well, I, I know the charges that we have for building, but there's nothing like that. And, and as far as uh, impact fees, if they'd be grandfathered in if they were built before the time, they wouldn't have to and uh, so Chris is checking into that just so you're aware. And I did, I spoke with that. That if you give them an update. Yeah, I did speak with that. It's that's correct. They don't, yeah. They're not required um, required to pay the impact fees around on our sewer and water. Uh, it's a home, a single. It's a replacement of a home, so uh, those impact fees have been satisfied in the past. Um, as far as school, as you know, they're exempt from that as well because they are age restricted. And we looked into the permit files, and those permits are typically between about eight hundred and nine hundred dollars for the building permit for these single family residents. So the figure of sixteen thousand is kind of foreign to me. I don't know where that, that came from, but it's about nine hundred dollars. That was what I was familiar with what we yep. voted and whatnot. And but it's out there and I just I always check into everything. Okay. And I appreciate the information. Uh, yeah, and the building part is self supporting that pays for the inspectors to come in and do everything, right? Correct. The inspections and the plan review. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I did think of something else from this noon when we were talking, and the last thing I'd like to have is somebody walk away from the meeting we had wondering what was said and what not. And because I'm always signing it after we vote these minutes in there, there's a file in there of the minutes. And, you know, even when we're in a budget hearing, that's a public meeting, and that's filed, and all the questions are filed, and any questions are answered, and even our comments back. So, you know. Feel free whenever you're wondering about something, go back and check it. We'll be glad to pull the information for you. Yeah. Okay. That's all from me. Anybody in the public have a second chance public comment? Please come forward, state your name and the record. Van Shokum. Um, the uh, 12619 Milwaukee to Berries. I'm an outsider. Um, and I just want to comment, you're talking about the mobile homes, and I've done a couple of in-depth stories on mobile home parks and to Berries, and I, I suspect that it's the cost of moving the old home and dismantling it, and that it's quite expensive because there are a couple of parks, in, in, and you know one of them, Sharp, he does, uh, Derek does about the Sharps Park and Eustis, and, but then there's another one in uh, Tavares, and the, the owners were going to uh, evict everybody. And uh, when they did that, they found out that they couldn't move their home because they're too old, so the state won't let them move it. So they lose all their investment in the old home. And then secondly, that uh, if they move it, it was between eight and twelve thousand dollars to move it. Uh, and then they had to find another park that would accept a home that old. So uh, I do know that one of the people involved in the mobile home parks was buying those homes were being moved out of the villages yeah. and moved them 
into another park that actually might be in Lady Lake, I'm not sure, uh, Robert Tamburo. Uh, yeah. oh. Sunshine. Sunshine. Sunshine Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So he was doing some of that, but uh, so that's probably where a lot of it comes through, but it sounds questionable that much money and why they would. I, I think maybe they just don't want, one, the property taxes, as you know, are higher in this county, but then also the uh, probably they just don't want the what they call historic section to be filled. They want to sell them the more expensive homes in the new lots. So I just thought I'd share that. Thank you for that input. I was just concerned because they were saying it was something that the town created and not to our knowledge. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Hearing and seeing none, we're adjourned.